Urban ecology, I would say, is a fairly recent concept in ecology because uh, about 20, 30 years ago, most of ecology research was in pristine landscapes. I'm using the word quote unquote, but in sort of wildscapes where you didn't have people, and that was where most ecologists wanted to study biodiversity and ecological issues. But there's been more and more awareness in recent years about the fact that you have uh, a lot of biodiversity where people exist. So, you know, then the, the, the theme sort of shifted from pristine wilderness areas to also include areas where you had forests and people. And I would say one end of that spectrum has now moved to cities, which makes sense because more than 50% of the world's population is now in cities. And people realize that you have a lot of ecology in cities. You have a lot of nature in cities, definitely. And it's very important because it gives people, uh, their, often most people living in cities, their only chance to actually see nature and understand its patterns. So it's very important socially for us as well as important for the sustenance of biodiversity because if you see that you know more than 50% of the world lives in cities, cities have a huge footprint on the rest of the world. So you need to understand how ecology actually functions in cities and therefore what the scope for ecology and the survival of ecology in uh, urban affected areas is going to be for the future. So that is urban ecology. Really. And how is urban ecology applied um, in India at the moment? It's a fascinating country because it's developing at such a such a fast and, and, and rapid pace um, and cities you, you come back to cities after being five years away and you, you, you find you're lost because every, everything's changed. So how, how is that being applied um, in India? It's a very recent field, I would say, in India. So in the past maybe 10 years or so, people have started really looking at cities and urban ecology. It's only really, we know a little bit about a few cities. We know about uh, Bangalore, we know a little bit about Delhi, we know a little bit about Pune. So a few cities that we know a lot about urban ecology. And uh, there is a lot to know. But India is a place which is urbanizing rapidly, it seems, on the face of it. But if you look at it, it's still 70% rural. And therefore, you know, it has a ways to go. And, uh, but therefore, uh, you know, it's very important for us at this phase to see what happens to urban ecology in India. Whose responsibility is it to ensure that um, buildings are constructed in a, an appropriate manner to take care of biodiversity? Is it the central government? Is it state governments? Is it, is it down to individuals to ensure that planning uh, in local areas is, um, isn't, isn't done to the detriment of, of local forests or or other landscapes? Governance in India, I think as in many countries, is a lot of overlapping you know, jurisdictions, overlapping responsibilities. So the central government, the Ministry of Environment and Forest, various other gov you know, central ministries have a role to play in urban ecology, you know, influencing, you know, for instance, what happens with lakes, what happens with urban forests. State governments have their own criteria, which also influence. Then you have city municipalities, cities, which then have their own jurisdictions. And uh, then within cities you have wards, which is the next level of, so you have someone in charge of a ward who's an elected representative who answers to the people, who has you know, certain wards to certain initiatives. Then you have local communities, and there's a lot of local community civic action, and you have corporates which also come in. You have a lot of civic action groups and the judiciary. So it's, 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 a, it's really a very wide array of people. And sometimes they work together very well, and sometimes it gets chaotic and overlapping. And, and in terms of whose responsibility is um, moving away from, from the almost official responsibility, is it, is it important that, is there enough education out there for people to understand exactly what they can do to make their, their, their localities um, better and, and preserve biodiversity? I think the education was always there to some extent. Now the awareness is becoming increasing of, you know, for instance, impacts like solid waste and people see what it does. Or the lack of having, you know, you used to have a functioning lake and you could always watch birds but you can't anymore. So these, the effects of urbanization are beginning to become more apparent. And there's a lot of civic action in many Indian cities around issues of urban restoration projects, solid waste, rainwater harvesting. So several of these issues are really galvanizing communities. And uh, that seems to be a place for a lot of action. And, and I know you're focused on science today, but when we look at um, politics in India, particularly the, the almost debate between the, the green side and the development side, it seems fascinating because there, there seems to be a really um, fierce argument going on at the moment between the Indian Minister of, of the Environment, who seems a very sort of uh, feisty and strong lady, and uh, many within her own sort of cabinet in, in, in Parliament who, who want to see more airports built and more roads and more buildings. How, how do you see that, that, that playing out? It would be interesting to see because I think the development sort of lobby, if I would put it that way, is very strong in India and of course you need economic growth and you need jobs and things. But I think there's increasing awareness of the economic disparities that this brings. 
as well as the fact that we can't sort of develop now and then later you know pay attention to the environment that these need to go hand in hand otherwise you're not going to have sustainable development per se but the other interesting thing i think in india is that a lot of a groundswell of civic action by communities is taking forefront so you have uh, for instance in the forest you have the forest rights act which has come about a large part because of local communities agitating for rights to the forest that they've always traditionally managed so there's a lot of polit growing political action taken by these communities again in uh, in uh, cities you have local communities again agitating and it be when it becomes a voting issue then you can get people to local government to join act, you know hands with you and see that the changes that you want actually take place so i think that's again a big potential for change and uh, i think awarenesses of economic inequity were always there but it depends on who actually takes the decisions and now with more people actually having a say in those decisions hopefully things will change